I wasn't going to make a video on this. There's just so many emulation handhelds out right now. How many times have you seen a horizontal layout? This thing just seemed unremarkable. It's got the biggest 4x3 screen that I've seen, so it's, it's got that going for it. Then somebody on my Twitch tried to convince me otherwise. When are you gonna get a 405 M, Bob? I have one, actually. Convince me to make a video on it. Why, why should I make a video on this? Because it's better? That's not very convincing. <laughs> the same as a Retroid Pocket 3 Plus? Really? That's kind of sick. Then I can name the video Get This Instead of a Retroid. Look at you. Look at you. You came in here and I was like, you gotta convince me. And then you convinced me. And now, now we're on the same page. I'm not very happy with Retroid right now. The Retroid Pocket 3 was a dud. The 3 Plus should have just been the 3. And the Flip had a bad hinge. It was an overall bad design. And now they're remaking the 2 for some reason. But regardless of my gripes with them, Retroids are among some of the cheapest and easiest emulation devices to get going. Their launcher is one of the best, and it makes things easy for an emulation novice. It's Android, which most people are familiar with, and it just downloads all the stuff you need and everything is more or less just there with minimal setup. But I would love to start recommending another device to people. And this is pretty much the same specs as a Retroid. The same CPU, the same GPU, the same RAM, hell, even the same amount of internal memory. And it comes with Android already set up with all the emulators you need. But for some reason, it feels like it gets a little bit better performance. And there's a new custom firmware we can try to make things even better. This might just be the new recommendation. This video is sponsored by Red Magic and their Red Magic 8S Pro. Whoa, that's a cool looking phone. Powerful enough to play games in Dolphin with its industry leading Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor and up to 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5X RAM. A gigantic 6,000 milliamp hour battery gets you actual days of usage according to some independent tests that I just found on Google right now. It even fits the backbone controller. With this guy, you don't need all those gaming devices in your bag. You just need this. It even has touch sensitive shoulder buttons that you can map to anything. Wow! What type of phone is that? Uh, the Red Magic 8S Pro. The who, what now 8S, huh? It's an Android phone. Android? How am I supposed to send you my wordles now? The same way you always do? <gasps> They're green! Ah! Is that all I am to you? Just a colored word bubble? Yes. The Red Magic 8S Pro is the best Android device, probably the best phone you can get for gaming right now. And you can check it out right now at the link in the description below. I got the RG405M from KeepRetro.com, who sent it to me, and it came with Android already set up and all of the mostly optimized emulators on there already. The only thing I had to do was point each emulator to what folder it needed to read games from. Like this. And that's it. You're ready to game. Wow. This is pretty good. And I've got to say, I don't love the bare bones Android OS. It's very ugly, aside from the, the waifu. But I was very impressed with the stock emulation experience. It took me seconds to start getting into some games and F-Zero on N64 ran smooth as butter, which is an anomaly for an N64 game, let alone a 60 frames per second one. And even Smash Brothers on GameCube ran fantastic. I don't remember it ever running this good on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. And this is straight out of the box. It did come with Aether, the PS2 emulator, so I tried to push it a little more, and we definitely found its limit. I wouldn't consider this usable for PS2 games. Okay. I love that the Retroid 16x9, but a 4x3 screen 
is not a deal breaker. 16 by 9 is really only going to be usable for like PSP games on here. Most of what we're going to be playing will be just fine, if not even better, at 4x3. This even includes GameCube games. There's not many that I would want to play widescreen. I'm already willing to recommend this because of that stock experience, but I'm a little hesitant to recommend it to emulation noobs because of that stock experience. That Android is just very ugly, aside from the waifu. But they gotta know what emulators to open to play whatever systems they, they, they wanna play. They also gotta point each emulator to each ROM folder. See, the Retroid does require a little setup, which could be intimidating for a new user, but at least they sort of walk you through it. And when you're done, you've got your Game Boy, N64, GameCube games all laid out in nice, easy to navigate folders. The RG405M expects you to know that if you want to play GameCube games, you got to open up Dolphin MMJR. If you, if you want to play 3DS games, you got to open up Citra. If you want to play N64 games, you got to open up Moopin and so on and so forth. But at least the RG405M comes with ROMs. That's a big plus. That's a hurdle that you're going to have to go over if you're going to get a Retroid. You can very easily just take this device and slap a front end on here, which is one of the best things about Android. You can take Dig, you can take Loomroid, you can take Daiji Show, which is what I have here, and just slap it on here and make the whole thing look a lot better. But we're going to take it one step further because there's already a whole firmware that was created by the community called Gamma OS, and that comes with a front end already on it. It comes with Daiji Show, which is what I have right here. It's also going to give you optimized emulators and it's going to give you some performance tweaks and stuff like that, which is usually what these custom firmwares do. You'll see that I'm, I'm not sure you need it. <laughs> I opted for the light version of Gamma OS this time, which does not come with any of the Google Play services. Normally, I would love access to the Google Play Store so I can download the emulators I always have or I can have freaking dead cells on here if I wanted to. But this time I decided I wanted to see what a lighter, maybe a little faster OS can do on here. And it should come with all the stuff that I need. The setup was a bit more involved than I would have liked. Of course, they use Retro Game Course Guide on it, which is great, but I still had to do things multiple times because I, I just, I don't, I don't know why. This whole thing involves using developer tools to connect your 405M to your PC, which sounds harder than it is, but it is still more involved than say, Putting Garlic OS on an RG35XX, which is as easy as just putting one file on a micro SD card and rebooting. I wish they were all that easy. One thing that is cool about the light version of Gamma OS is that it just loads right into Daiji Show. You're just ready to go right when it's done installing. On the other version, you have to do the whole Android setup, which is a bit annoying. Of course, there's no games there though. So you've got to pop the micro SD card back in, which will keep all the games that came pre-installed. But the one thing that I've always hated about Daiji Show is that you have to point each system to its ROM folder, every single one of them. Daiji Show devs, if you're listening, just, just let us use a generic file system. Like, like every emulation device uses like GB for Game Boy. Just, you should just know that that's where the Game Boy games are. It, that shouldn't be that hard to, to figure out. To be fair though, I did discover that this new firmware had a file system on the device itself. But I mean, the, the, the games come pre-installed on an SD card. So I'm gonna wanna use the games that were on the SD card. I'm gonna wanna use that file system. One thing that I noticed was that Daiji Show did not have any options for N64, Dreamcast, or, or GameCube which is very strange. Some people are gonna be getting this thing for stuff all the way up to GameCube. You can download the additional platforms in the settings, so that's not really a big deal, but I didn't see an option for PS2, which I guess is fine because PS2 ran like absolute garbage anyway, so you're not gonna to wanna to play that. Then you gotta go ahead and sync all those damn folders. I'm also a bit annoyed that Gamma OS may be just the light version, but this thing didn't come with Citra, Dolphin, or, or anything to play any of those games. I know that you're you're the light version, but that's too light. I, wa I, I wanna still use the thing.
Team Retrogue left a link for the Retroid versions of Dolphin and Citra in the description of their video. So you gotta put those back on the system. But it wasn't necessarily easy to put back on. I had to do a lot of finagling. I don't know why, the APK just wouldn't load. I had to try a bunch of different ways to get it uh, open. This is particularly annoying because they were already on the stock version of, of the ROG 405M. They were on the stock Android. And you know what? They worked great. Honestly, I think Dolphin might have worked a little better on the stock Android. The Retroid Dolphin runs fine in Gamma OS, but maybe I should have been using a different version. The one that came on here stock was a little better, but I'm pretty sure that's the one that came stock. I mean, it's fine, but it makes me think maybe this all wasn't worth it. I think if you're gonna be getting one of these things, maybe just throw a front end on it yourself. Daiji Show if you really like the look of this, but Dig and Lumeroid are just so easy to use. And you can just download any apps that you want if you're missing anything, but it should more or less work great right out of the box. This is mostly great for something that just works right out of the box. It rivals how well the Retroid experience works right out of the box. The 405M would be great to get for someone that you want to get into emulation. I just recommend slapping a front end on there. But that's basically it. You're also getting a solid aluminum shell versus the Retroid's cheap plastic, which is a nice touch. The only downside that I can see is that because of the 4x3 screen, you're gonna be missing out on dual screen systems like DS and 3DS. Having that nice long 16x9 screen was great for having both screens of a DS or 3DS side by side. Otherwise, the 4x3 screen is great for most stuff that you'd wanna play. And you can also just toggle screens in DS if the game mostly uses one. The other downside is that the 405M is $172 plus shipping from Anbernic and $192 from keepretro.com. The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus is just $150 plus shipping from retroid.com. That's kind of not a bad deal. It would be so much easier to recommend this if they could meet that price point. Even if this thing wasn't aluminum, that's fine. It doesn't need to be. You know, there is a metal version of the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus and it is also $180. So this really isn't a bad deal for the 405. The Retroid and the 405M are both great options if you wanna play everything up to and including GameCube and don't wanna spend the price of an Odin or a Steam Deck. The Retroid is great if you wanna save some money and you don't mind setting up Android and setting up your launcher and putting your own ROMs on there. You'll probably need a little tutorial if you've never set up an emulation console before. The 405M is great if you just want something that works right out of the box. You'll just need to know that Dolphin is for GameCube, Citra is for 3DS, Moopin is for N64, and RetroArch is basically for everything else. If you know you want to put your own front end on here, the 405M is also a great option too because it's ready for you to do that right out of the box. Maybe you're already experienced with Android and you know what that means. Wait, why is Mega Man stretched? What the hell? There we go. Why wasn't that set like that? Just to complicate things even more, Anbernic just announced the RG405V, which is basically the same thing as this, same chipset and everything. It's just vertical. I usually love their vertical consoles. That's how I would prefer to play. But this one is a bit uggo. It looks like those like hacked together portable game cubes that people used to make. Just to complicate things even more, I just realized there's the Ambernick RG505, which has the exact same chipset as the 405 and the Retroid. So that one is significantly cheaper. I guess the reason why this flew under my radar was because everybody said that it sucked when it came out and it looked like everything else I've tried before. It actually looks a lot like a Retroid. But with Gamma OS, I heard it's a lot better. I don't know what the stock experience is like. I assume the stock experience on this is probably gonna be worse because it's older. So maybe it's worth spending the extra couple bucks for that stock experience and a nice metal case. But if you know you want Gamma OS and something that looks like a 
Switch knockoff. I mean... Anyway, what do you guys think about the Ambernic RG405M? There's ups and downs to all of these different consoles. I was shocked that this thing was Android and had a good stock experience. And I really don't want to give them too much credit for coming with games because that's what's going to ruin this whole industry for everybody. <laughs> but I mean, you can't deny that that's just going to be easier for novices who are new to emulation. Anyway, what, let me know what you think about this versus something like the Retroid in the comments below. At me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. I stream on twitch.tv slash wolfden every once in a while. The best way to reach me is to just come over there and talk to me directly in the chat. Don't forget to check out Red Magic at the description below if you want an actual good Android experience. You don't even need one of these at all. But the most important thing that you can do to help support us right here is just subscribe so you know when every single new video goes up and share this video with a friend, a friend who wants to get into emulation consoles. This might be the one to get. Thank you very much. Have yourself a very good week.